Cult of the Lamb is a game that I've had my eye on since it was revealed back at Gamescom last year. Its superb art style is what many like myself were initially drawn in by, and it also happens to have a much darker and twisted side than its cute characters first let on. Yeah, the game is really weird, but it's more than just a cute game with a dark twist. It's also an action roguelike that has you organizing your cult's village with a plethora of other sim elements sprinkled in. After you are saved from death from an ominous deity, you must venture out into five various regions to defeat enemies, but also grow your cult's following to worship this same deity. There's actually quite a lot going on here, far more than I originally thought it would have. So let's talk about if Cult of the Lamb is not only one of the best indie games that come out this year, but also if it's a game of the year contender. At this point in my playtime in Cult of the Lamb, I've not only beat the game, but done pretty much everything there is to do. And I'm really happy to say that just about everything there is to do in this game is a lot of fun, which is something I don't say very often. As I mentioned earlier, this game throws a lot at you, and for some, that might actually feel a bit overwhelming at first. But what Cult of the Lamb does so well is that it's a game that lets you take on pretty much everything at your own pace. So if you wanna just focus on farming and building up your village, you can do that. Or if you're someone who just wants to jump into the roguelike style crusade, Aids, you can do that as well. But what I admire about this game the most is the balance that it has from both facets of these systems. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. If you're someone who wants to grow your cult and village quickly, then you'll have to find a balance between the two, as Crusades reward you with resources and money to build new structures for your village. But in order to unlock these buildings, you'll have to build up enough faith in your village to progress through the skill tree. There's a nice back and forth here that I really enjoyed about this game, and this gameplay loop has me wanting to go back to the game even right now as I'm making this review. Another aspect of this game that I really enjoyed was the village building, as it might just be one of my favorite versions of this take in any video game. Throughout the game, you'll be gaining new followers and the support of your one true cult. And as you bring these followers in, you can even personalize each one with various follower forms and names, which adds a nice personal touch to each one of them. What you choose to do with your followers next is up to you, but you can have them do a variety of jobs like tending the farm, refining materials, and even praying. Each follower has their own traits that can affect the cult, and some will even ask you to do special quests for them that really add a fun little mix into the gameplay. Pretty much everything revolves around your followers back at your village as their loyalty towards you really matters. You're not only having to manage their sickness and their hunger, but also their affinity towards the cult. How you deal with that is actually up to you, so you can base various rituals around your own playstyle, which means that everyone's cult will look pretty different and not only in terms of appearance. <laughs> You'll unlock rituals of your choosing with the purpose of getting something out of your followers. This could be as simple as throwing a feast to make sure they aren't hungry and avoid dissension, or you can even sacrifice followers and use more sinister ways to gain rewards from them. And I really love this level of choice when playing this game as there are so many routes you can take to make your village and cult truly feel like yours. Combat is another part of this game that I think that they really nailed. You'll crusade through various biomes with different sections through it that you can choose, each having their own rewards within them. These rewards can either help you in your current crusade or can help improve your cult back at home. So it's really up to you to choose how you want to balance these, which constantly kept the gameplay feeling fresh. There are also these tarot cards that give you perks for your current run, and the boss battles felt pretty great as as well. The actual combat mechanics felt fluid and responsive, and even though they didn't quite hit the highs that a game like Hades had for me, it was still very enjoyable. I could go on with the aspects of this game that I liked, but I'll just touch on one more that I think really stood out, which is the presentation. The art style, as you can see, is amazing, but it's the music that really completes this game for me. soundtrack honestly has no right being as good as it is, and it is easily one of my favorite soundtracks of the year. Okay, so since no game is perfect, let's quickly talk about the things in this game that I think could be improved upon. And a lot of it actually has to do on the technical side of things rather than the gameplay elements themselves. For instance, I actually encountered a number of glitches while playing that either caused me to get zoned in on a follower like this one, 
or not allow me to progress to the next day or room. The good thing is that the game saves regularly and having to go back and restart it never lost me any significant amount of time, but something that hopefully gets improved in a future patch. Also, there was always this giant frame hiccup every time the game started a new day where everything on screen would freeze for a few seconds. Even after playing the game as long as I did, this almost always caught me off guard, which although very short lived was annoying at times. The last thing I wanted to touch on here was the interact button. And if there was one aspect of this game I would want to be improved the most, it was certainly this one. As it really was difficult to operate in a populated village when the same button was used for so many different actions. Like if you have 20 followers all crowded around the prayer statue, it made it incredibly difficult to gather faith from the statue without interacting with one of the followers. There could be poop or throw up all on the ground, and as you try to clean it up, followers will constantly get in your way as it's the same button to interact with both. Hell, at one point there was even a dead body in a crowded area, and when followers see a dead body in this game, they usually start throwing up. And as you probably guessed, it's the same button to pick up the body as it is to interact with your followers. So in the process of me trying to secure the body, many of my followers would walk by and throw up all over the place starting this insane vicious cycle. All while I was just trying to pick up the body, but couldn't because it kept defaulting to me talking to the followers instead. As someone playing the game, it was honestly a bit of a nightmare, though for anyone watching me play the game, it was really funny for them to watch the chaos unfold, so I guess it wasn't the worst thing in the world. But regardless, it would be nice for them to allow us to choose different button prompts for different types of interactions. It's crazy to think that with the number of systems this game has going, that it pulls it off as well as it does. There wasn't a single moment in Call to the Land where I wasn't completely engaged. It's one of those games that even when I'm not playing it, I'm still thinking about it, as it really got under my skin in a good way. Obviously this year is far from over, but I wouldn't be surprised if this game isn't in my top five by the end of it. So with all of that being said, I'm gonna give Call to the Lamb a nine out of 10. It's an incredible game. I really enjoyed this game, and I think there's just about something here for everyone. I wouldn't be surprised if this game picked up even more traction than it already has because it is just that damn good. So I hope you enjoyed this review and if you play Cult of the Lamb let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. I do a variety of reviews and previews for video games and movies so if that's your thing be sure to subscribe as that would help a lot. I also stream a variety of games like Cult of the Lamb over on my Twitch channel and talk about games on TikTok so if you're wanting to talk about all things video games be sure to drop by. Anyways thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I'm all for games that have quest markers and objectives but it's also nice to have this take on an open world where the game just leaves you to your own devices. Like, oh, you want to explore some weird catacombs that has a wooden cat that breathes fire? Yeah, you can do that. You can also travel to almost every major part of the game before going to an early area to the south that could have been explored earlier in the game if you really wanted to. Yes, that was me.